Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica Deruzza, and this is the Trust Psyche podcast on astrology and depth psychology. I'm a psychotherapist, astrologer, and teacher, and you can find me at trustpsyche.com, where you can begin studying astrology with me today. Thank you so much for being here with me. I really appreciate you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Hi everyone. I have no idea what episode this is because it's Mercury retrograde and I can't access any of my last podcast episodes to see what number we're on. My best guess, 30, 31, maybe a little higher. In any case, I wanted to go ahead and record this and just say, hey, here we are. And in my experience, transits are growth-filled and humbling, just like life. I want to share today about Venus-Saturn, and I realized that um, in going back and listening to my work, which at some point I review everything that I record, that it can have this quality for me of uh, prophecy or insight into what is going to unfold thematically for me um, in the future when looking at a specific aspect. And so I want to do that today with Venus Saturn because it's been on my heart a lot. Uh, As many of you know, I'm born with the conjunction in Sagittarius. But right now, uh, both my husband Travis and I are beginning Saturn transiting Saturn in Aquarius square Venus. Um, His Venus and my Venus are in an opposition. So right now Saturn's T-squaring our Venus oppositions and our synastry. So here's some things that come to mind. Saturn Venus is as much about severing as it is about bonding or congealing. Saturn is as much the sword that cuts the rope as it is the binding of the rope itself. And this is really important to hold and remember whenever we're thinking about the planetary archetype of Saturn in our lives. Saturn, Venus, time periods can be times in our life where we both end old friendships and relationships as much as deepening into our commitment to the relationships that we want to continue. For example, at the beginning of this year, 2022, I made a list of all the people who I carry in my heart, friends and family that I love and that Um, I value having in my life. This is what Venus is about. It's about what we love. It's about what we value. And it's also about what we desire, what we want. And this is very important, I think, especially for women to be in touch with what it is that we want, because we're so conditioned to not know that. And in this list, I wrote out I made a commitment to myself that these people on this list, which is such a Saturn thing to do, would know that I love them and wouldn't just know it because I decided to call them or write to them to let them know that I love them. That's only one part of it, but that I was also going to show them that I love them. That often for me looks like spending quality time with someone. I think Venus Saturn definitely is about the quality of time that we share with other humans. Saturn is about our focused attention and our devotion of our time. That which we willingly choose to give to other Venus in relationship because we value and love them and want to connect And this is what Venus is about. It's about connection and it's about love, both in friendship and romantically. 
So Saturn and Venus are the social contracts that we have with one another, which of course, as we evolve and change over time, need to be revised and updated. Right now, Mercury retrograde is at zero Gemini, and it is uh, squaring Saturn in the sky at 25 Aquarius. The lunar eclipse last Sunday uh, was in uh, Taurus Scorpio and being T-squared by Saturn. And so this Mercury retrograde is passing directly over the path of the eclipse, going back to the exact degree of where uh, Saturn was when the eclipse happened. And therefore, this Mercury retrograde is exactly opposite my Venus, conjunct Travis's Venus, and then the Saturn's T-squaring that. And I think Mercury retrograde time periods are a wonderful time to vision, um, to slow down, and, and to ask questions. They definitely can have an oracular quality to them if we allow for that mode of consciousness to take place. And I do, do quite enjoy that about Mercury retrograde. Uh, not so favorable for knowing what podcast episode this is, but definitely good for uh, divining. So in this uh, taking action of spending quality time, I am doing everything within my power to see these people. And these people are spread out all around the country and all around the world. Uh, my Venus and Sag in the ninth house means that I have a lot of international relationships. Some of my dearest friends live in other countries. Um, Most of these people I met in college or graduate school or in an academic university setting, whether I was the teacher or the student. It's a very ninth house thing, international, higher learning. But it's also most of these relationships are based in the love, shared love of philosophy metaphysics, cosmology, culture. And so these people that are on this list, I am doing everything with my power to make a trip to either go visit them or have them come visit me so we can get to spend that quality time together. Because I want to invest, which is a very Venus-Saturn word, I want to invest my time and energy into strengthening these bonds because these are the connections that I want to last. Long-lasting connections is a Venus-Saturn quality. That's why sometimes it's correlated to the aspect of marriage. It's the commitment or the bond to long-lasting, enduring relationships. But it's also equally the aspect of divorce or severing. Going back to this idea of it can equally be the congealing bond the fortification of the relationship, or it can be the severing, the ending, the divorce. Saturn brings endings to things. It brings a sense of finality, of limit and loss. And there's grief in that. We all grow, we change, we evolve, our values change and evolve. So one way this has shown up for us recently is some old friends have come into our life. Friends that we haven't seen for seven years, a quarter of a Saturn cycle. And it became clear in our exchange that we had changed and that we didn't share values anymore together and that it didn't feel good to spend time and to share space. And so we said no and we put up a boundary and set a limit and just said no, no thank you. This isn't right for us. This isn't what we want coming back to that quality of Venus of what is it that you want and to know that that matters. And so right now I'm deeply committed under this Saturn Venus transit to lean into the practice of slowing down and to asking myself what I re- what it is that I really want and to do my very best to give that to myself. Yet at the same time, other friends, old friends, Saturn Venus have come into our life that my heart feels very connected to. My heart feels beaming and open and filled with love and grace when I think about these people that I treasure them. And that's a very Venus Saturn quality is it's our treasure chest, right? It's that which we want to protect and keep safe. And so who are the people in my life that I want to keep safe and in my heart? 
to keep in my treasure chest, treasured friends, and to make sure that I go and let them know I want to share magic with you. I want to share love with you. I want to share life with you. I'm here. Another example of Saturn Venus is the commitment to your art, the commitment to your music. Travis has been playing the upright bass for 30 years, an entire Saturn cycle. Well, over the last couple of years, he hasn't been playing it as much, mostly because he's a new father, but also because he had focused a lot of his time and attention into his higher education, getting his PhD, writing his dissertation, graduating, right? And now he's a professional astrologer giving readings, and he just taught his first course, The Astronomy and Cultural History of Astrology, which went phenomenally and changed my life, truly. And my metaphysics. And my deepening appreciation of astrology. He definitely made me fall in love with history, which is a very Venus Saturn thing. The love of history, the love of the past. Coming into deeper relationship with the ancestors is Venus Saturn. And so now here he is, Saturn squaring his Venus. And what is he doing? He's recommitting every day to play his bass, even if it's just 15 minutes, hopefully longer, but even just 15 minutes. So Saturn Venus is about um, the habits that we make in relation to our creativity and our creative practices. Saturn is all about short-term and long-term goals, and it's most happy when those goals are achievable. Well, our long-term goals are most achievable when we create short-term goals and when we're accountable to those in some way. And so Travis has been invited to play music again. And in that, he has picked up the bass and he has started everyday practicing. Saturn loves routine, it loves practice, it loves commitment, and it loves ritualizing that time. And so here he is at the Saturn return of playing the upright bass, practicing it again every single day. So Saturn Venus is the recommitment to your art practices. It can be picking back up an instrument or committing yourself to playing your instrument in a way that is in some way matured. Saturn Venus is about the maturation of our love and it's about the maturation of our art and the maturation of our music and the maturation of our creative process. And I see how happy it's making him and our daughter and me. And so Venus comes in as that eros that magnetism that grace that harmony and that happiness that you get that is the reward of your efforts venus saturn is about being tuned in to the reward of your efforts the beauty in your efforts and the grace that comes from those efforts i think we have to be rewarded in life to persevere and keep going. Venus Saturn is about those beautiful rewards that you get when you show your love through how you give your time. I think when we're looking at relationships, when we're looking at romantic relationships and one or both people are going through a Saturn Venus transit. You look at how the relationship is maturing. And depending on how old the relationship is, I think that that transit shows up very differently. If you're in the first year of the relationship, there can be this really intense drive to become more committed and serious. Maybe you move in together. 
Maybe you get engaged. Uh, maybe you get a dog, <laughs> right? Something that binds you contractually more. Saturn is that binding, but it's also that contract, right? Saturn is the law, it's tradition, it's rules, it's governance. And so Saturn Venus time periods are time periods where we take on greater responsibility in the social contracts that we have. And there's usually some kind of symbolic gesture and legal gesture, which is what, for example, a marriage is, right? It's a, it's a symbolic legal gesture uh, that says, hey, I, I'm committing myself to you. When we legalize something, when we bring it into law, um, in a way we're bringing it to earth and giving it form and making it more real, but more real in the eyes of society. Venus Saturn very much has to do with societal love, legal love, right? Um, Travis and I got married under Venus, square Saturn in the sky. A long lasting marriage contract till death do us part. That level of commitment. But also, there was equally a lot of loss through the portal of our marriage of our sacred ceremony. There was loss of family and friends, relationships that cannot continue going forward. Real endings that were painful. And so there's a grief and a pain in Venus Saturn. And there's a need to tend to that grief. In my experience, those waves of grief that come with Saturn Venus transits are so real and really require our time and our attention to feel them and to be with them. Those emotions that are there in the face of whatever loss it is that you're going through. Saturn, Venus, time periods are time period, periods where we lose loved ones. Either the death of a loved one, the physical loss of a loved one, because you've moved away and you no longer live in the same place or because you've changed and it's just not possible to stay in the same level of intimacy and connection. Saturn Venus can also be what's happening in your friendship circle, right? Venus is our friendships. And so Saturn Venus time periods, even though it's your transit, you could notice that your friends are getting married. Uh, for example, we have two different friends getting married this year where we're going to be playing central roles in the ceremony. There's one where Travis is going to officiate the wedding. Um, our other dear friend is getting married. So Saturn Venus can also be a time period where you're being asked to take on some kind of official role in somebody's wedding ceremony. It also can be a time period where your friends who are married already but have been going through problems and things just aren't in alignment anymore or maybe they never were between them or they separate. Saturn and Venus can be the separation of friends in your life from one another. And as we all know, marriages socially impact communities, right? They impact the family system but they also impact the community or the friend circle. I think most of us at this point have experienced a breakup or a divorce within our, our community and the real consequences of that. Saturn is the consequences of our decisions, right? The effect that that has in that separation, whether people take sides or it makes it impossible to hang out with those people anymore or there's a lot of processing to do in order for it to be okay. I mean, there's just so much that goes on. Separation and divorce is messy, especially the more bound you are. The longer you've been married, if you have children together, if you own property together, these things that you legally did in society to show the legitimacy of your love and the commitment there and also to get the benefits of what it means to be married 
at least here in the U.S., with tax breaks and all of that good stuff, right? So when you sever those legal contracts, it costs money, takes time. It's complicated. And so the longer we've been in something with Saturn, the more time, the more embedded we are, nested we are within something, whether that's a relationship, a marriage, whatever it is, typically the harder it becomes to sever it because the interstitching of your life, the depth to which you are interwoven into those relations with your in-laws and your children, extended family, it's harder to extricate yourself. And there's typically a lot of feelings involved (laughs) and a lot of gossip, (laughs) a lot of drama. Venus Saturn also has a lot to do with finances. Right? Venus is in part money. Right? Uh, has a lot to do with currency. I think of Venus as currency. Also has to do with trade. You know, we have to remember that for most of history, marriage was something we did to better and strengthen the family or the tribe. It was a legal contract that usually had to do with the betterment of goods more money prosperity for the family it's only very very recently that marriage has anything to do with love so no wonder we're still really trying to figure that one out but venus saturn has so much to do with finances and most of us humans have issues around money whether we have a lot of it a little of it or somewhere in between money represents so much it's such a strong field money a lot in there a lot of legacy being a saturn is the way that we've inherited our relationship to money from our ancestors How did your parents deal with money and your grandparents and your great-grandparents? What's the story of money? I think it's really powerful to look at that, to trace that. Especially when perhaps your relationship to money is different than your family. Different than the socioeconomic status you grew up in. If your socioeconomic status has changed there typically is a lot of things to feel there around that in order to really be able to exist in that different economic level that you're in relative to where you came from, relative to the past. So... Venus, Saturn, time periods are a time period where we want to come into a more mature relationship with money in our life, where we're asked to take a close look at our finances, to understand what's coming in and what's going out in that currency, to be clear on how we invest our money, where we spend it, as a representation of what it is we value and believe in. Money is a very powerful force. And where we spend it matters. How we make it and where we give it to matters. And Venus Saturn has us take a close look at that. It can be a really helpful time for financial planning, financial strategy, But it also can be a time where we're asked to really reevaluate what our relationship with money is. And the typically unconscious thoughts and feelings, stories that we have around it. I find that tending to money and tending to our story around money to be incredible. What we discover there. 
And so in that maturation of relationship to money, it can be a time period where we get more clear on our priorities of what it is that we want to invest in and with whom we want to invest. Venus Saturn, of course, has so much to do with boundaries in relationship, boundaries in love, defining those boundaries, getting more clear on them. Of course, that takes the requirement of us to slow way down, which Venus Saturn loves, loves to slow way down to get clarity around what those boundaries are. And for me, I come back to what is it that I want? What is it that feels good to me? The people that I treasure, that I love and respect the most in this world are the ones who are also taking the time to do the same. And then we get to come together and and be human and talk about it and laugh about it and share about it together. I deep, have a deep respect and admiration for folks who use their time for what they love and love the time that they have and to feel the preciousness in that. Thank you so much for being here with me. I am very excited under this Saturn-Venus transit for Travis and I that we'll be co-teaching this fall through Trust Psyche School. We're going to be teaching a course on aspects in astrology. This will be a shorter course, most likely six weeks. We're going to open registration soon through Trust Psyche School online at trustpsyche.com. If you're not on our mailing list, that's probably the best way to know about these things. You can go to trustpsyche.com and put your email in there. And there's three ways to take classes with us. One, live in the classroom. Second is live, but not in the classroom, where you get the videos each week as they're released. And then the third is at any point after the course is done at your own schedule. I feel incredibly grateful to be able to do what I love for a living and to spend my time doing what I want. It's a great privilege. And thank you so much for allowing me to share that with you, this life. Okay, everyone, I'll see you next time. Be well. We are dreamed into existence. What we do with that dream is up to us. How we dream is as important as what we dream, for the what of the dream knows itself through the how.